Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to have a look at the plate resistor by looking at the first gain stage in a 2203 Marshall here. So this is my JCM800 that I'm working on. We're going to have a look at the stock value, which is normally a 100K plate resistor in the first triode, the first gain stage, and many Marshalls and many other amps for that matter. We're going to compare 100K to a 330K plate resistor. And we're going to have a look at the difference between the two in three ways, right? We'll do it with some measurements. So I'll take it out to the bench. We'll use digital multimeter and the oscilloscope to see the difference between the two. We'll do a tone test, all right? So I'm gonna play through some rhythm. I'll play some lead into a looper and I will flick the amp between the stock 100K plate resistor and the 330K and we'll see if we can hear any difference in the tones. And in the third part, we'll have a look at some theory uh, to help explain what is going on here, um, which hopefully is a useful reference for you going forward. Stick around. All right, so we are going to look at the effect of a uh, plate resistor on a gain stage, right? So this is a JCM 800 2203 reissue board. If you look closely at this, you can see that um, this is already been modded, right? So the topic of today's video is to not to go through the mods. What I want to focus on is uh, what's happening with the plate resistor here for our first gain stage, right? So in the 2203, the first gain stage is actually um, V. 1B, right, so this side of uh, of V1, this triode, and in the stock amp, it's a 100K, right, we should all know this, 100K plate resistor um, on the first gain stage and a 100 on the second gain stage as well. Very common, right, to see a 100K plate resistor. So just for today's topic, we're going to look at what happens when this plate resistor is increased. So what I've got here is a, the stock 100K and a 220K. It's actually 221K uh, resistor, right? Um, so giving me a total plate resistance of 321K. Let's call it 320K for simplicity, right? So what we'll do is I'm gonna take some voltage readings Using some alligator clips, I will clip out the 221K resistor. We will measure the voltage with the stock 100K, and I will use the scope to measure the gain uh, that this gain stage is generating. We'll bring the 220K resistor in, and we'll do the same thing. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so using the alligator lead here, I have clipped out or bypassed right, the 220K resistor. So it's just clipped on either side of it, right? So effectively short-circuiting that part of it, leaving just the 100K plate resistor. So the first thing we're going to do is measure the plate voltage on this triode. And you can see 220 volts DC. Okay, so that's with the 100K plate in there. And the other thing I want to show is what's happening on the scope. Okay, where I've got the probe connected is right after this first gain stage, right? So in the 2203, after the first gain stage, it um, passes through the coupling cap and heads over straight to the gain pot. I'm measuring this at the entry to that gain pot. And you can see my peak to peak voltage here is 12. 0.5 volts. So I've got actually a 200 milliamp uh, sine wave, 1k sine wave coming into the front of the amp, it's in the high input. And with 100k plate resistor there, I'm getting 12.5 uh, volts peak to peak after that first triode. Let's have a look what happens when we bring in the 220k resistor. Okay, so I've taken the alligator clip out the way. We've got a plate resistor net now of 320K. Let's measure the voltage on this triode now. 
149 right so quite a significant drop from the 220 uh, that we had there right so the, the plate resistor often called the load resistor for the gain stage um, we're getting a much bigger uh, voltage drop for the DC supply across that have a look at the scope okay so I haven't changed any controls on the amp we've still got that 200 millivolt input signal at 1k coming into the high input and now I'm getting you know let's call it 15 point 6, 15.7 volts peak to peak from the gain stage, right? So you can see simply by changing that uh, the plate resistor there to a higher value, you're getting a, a, a larger voltage swing from that gain stage, right? Or more gain, uh, more amplitude on your guitar signal as it carries through the amps. So now we're seeing what happens with, you know, the voltage and the amount of gain on the scope. Let's see uh, what change that makes in terms of the tone of the amp. So I'll record, you know, um, with the 100K in their stock and with the 320 and see what difference there is. <laughs> So let's have a look at some theory. We're going to have a look at um, what's going on in the circuit here. This is a you know a triode, right? One half of a 12AX7. It's, we'll step through this in terms of the gain stage that we're talking about, right? Which is the first gain stage in a JCM 800 2203, and then we're going to have a look at the dreaded load lines, right? And by drawing out some load lines. Um, I will attempt to explain, you know, A, what they are, and B, how the load lines um, explain what is going on with this gain stage when we change this plate resistor here or anode resistor. Right? I'm using A in, in this diagram here to represent anode. Uh, anode plate it refers to this thing, right? which is the plate of the tube. Now, um, I will talk about this in terms of what's going on with respect to DC and then separately AC current. It's actually really important to understand those two things because um, if you get a grasp on that, you'll start to get a real understanding about what's going on in one of these tube amps. Right? So the beauty of this is that both DC and AC can exist on the same wire right the same circuit completely independently they just kind of coexist and and live happily together and to make amplification work um, they need to right so what is happening okay this ht here refers to the high voltage supply okay so in this first gain stage on our 2203 this is 293 volts dc supply here and we've got the 100k resistor here, right? Which 
is presenting or dropping the resistor, sorry, dropping the voltage down through current flow in this resistor to a voltage that is present on the anode. All right, so making the anode positively charged. Okay, down here at the cathode, which is connected to ground, right? So ground, you know, think of ground as negative. We've got, um, you know, negatively charged um, electrons, right? Which are kind of sitting on this cathode. Now, when the heaters, you turn the heaters on in your tube and it, and it warms up, what we're doing there is we're exciting the electrons on this cathode here so that under, under certain conditions, they're allowed to flow. All right, up to the anode. This is positively charged, this is negatively charged. The negatively charged electrons want to get to the positive, right? That's, you know, those they attract, right? So the, the higher this plate voltage, the more pull you've got on your electrons. The job of the grid, which is in the middle here, is to act like a filter, if you like, right? Or a control grid to either stop or allow the electrons to flow. And it's no coincidence, right, that the grid is connected to your guitar signal. This is the input into the tube stage, right? So this little AC uh, signal here is representing, you know, a sound wave, right? Or let's you know, call it your guitar signal. Um, it's causing a fluctuation of positive and negative voltage if, if this is ground in the middle of this wave. This is positively charged, this is negatively, you know, negative voltage. And when the uh, voltage on the grid changes, positive and then negative, it will, you know, allow the current to flow through this triode. Okay, so the DC current and DC voltage that you will measure here, as I mentioned, is providing a positive charge here, which actually makes the whole amplification stage work. The AC, on the other hand, which you can see kind of coming out of the plate here, is the AC um, uh, voltage. It is the same signal, but amplified and inversed phase-wise, right? So a positively, you know, positive cycle here results in a negative cycle um, after one gain stage. Normally you would see this, it would connect to a coupling capacitor, which like blocks the DC and allows the AC to flow through. Now, the real point here is that this load resistor or plate load resistor, not only is it um, setting the DC voltage that this plate sees, it's also creating uh, the voltage for the AC, because as soon as we get current flow up here, right, up and down, AC current flow, imagine it that way, that current flows through this resistor. And as soon as you have current flowing through a resistor, you get a voltage swing. All right? Ohm's law, V equals IR, I is current, V equals IR. So if we've got a fixed resistor or fixed resistance and the current is fluctuating up and down, all right? Because the grid here is, you know, um, controlling the flow of this current. We're going to induce a voltage across this resistor, and this by tapping off this point here in the gain stage and then passing it through a capacitor, we are effectively grabbing that amplified voltage and allowing it to pass through the rest of the amplifier. Okay, so the theory here really is that the value of this resistor will actually impact the amplitude of this signal here. Because if V equals IR and we increase the value of the resistor, you would expect to get more voltage swing. All right, moving to load lines. All right, so if you've ever looked up a tube data sheet, you'll often see a graph like this, right? Um, this graph has three bits of information on it, right? We've got the plate voltage for the tube. We've got the 
plate current, right, in milliamps. So this is in volts, this is in milliamps. Up the y-axis, the x-axis is plate voltage in volts. And then these sort of mostly straight, but going to curve a little bit, right? These are uh, the points in the graph where, uh, you know, the, the, the voltage and the current meet for a particular voltage on the grid, right? So... In the, in the schematic we were just looking at, we talked about voltage on a plate, we talked about the cathode being negatively um, charged, you know, set to ground, and we talked about the grid voltage being able to control the flow of current through the tube stage, through the triode, right? So these uh, voltages here, 0, minus 0.5, minus 1, etc., are voltages at once applied to that grid um, you'll get this amount of current if the plate voltage was say you know say 300 so if i was at 300 volts plate and i had a minus 2.5 uh, voltage on the grid then i'd follow the graph up here and then trace it across and it would tell me that i'm going to get you know one point uh 1.2 <laughs> to read for a second 1.2 milliamps of current and here i have printed that graph out and started to draw some load lines on it right so um these are the two load lines for the uh 100k plate resistor and then the 330k plate resistor the two different um settings or two, two different configurations that we used in that gain stage in the video so far. So to draw a line here, right, you need two points. And you can generate two points quite simply. You need to think about um, the voltage when the current is zero, and that gives you that point. And then you need to think about the current when the voltage is zero. Now, using this 100K one, um, is the easiest way to think of it, right? So, effectively, when the uh, the current is zero, that means the valve is in shutoff, right? So you can imagine the grid is biased in such a way that there's absolutely no current flow through the tube at all, which means if there's no current flow, that means that the plate resistor has no current flow going through it either, which means if you measured the voltage on either side of that plate resistor, it's going to be the same. Right? There's no voltage drop. So therefore, the plate voltage is actually the node voltage, right? the HT, you know, the B plus voltage, which in our tube stage here on our 2203 is 293 volts. Right? So we know when there's no current, plate voltage is actually 293 volts. So we can mark that point there. And for the other point on the load line here, we need to mark out the current in milliamps when the plate voltage is zero, right? Now, we have to suppose that, you know, the valve is in short circuit mode, right? So you could basically imagine that the plate is set to ground. I mean, in reality, that's you know it's impossible. It's not going to happen, right? For the purposes of uh, drawing our load lines, though, we need to imagine that, right? So that means if the plate is set at ground, that means the full B plus voltage is going to be dropped across our plate resistor, right? So just imagine that you've got a B plus. You've got a resistor, and then on the other side of the resistor, it's ground. It's the most you know, simple circuit you'll ever think of. You'll know, of course, that that means the full voltage has been dropped and dissipated across that resistor. What we get with a 100K resistor is 2.93 milliamps. All right, so you mark that. So you mark it there, mark it there, and then draw your straight line. Similarly, you can do the exact same thing with the 330K anode resistor or plate resistor, right? Do the same thing. It's going to be the same origination point here, but it's a much lower current because uh, it's a higher resistor, right? Higher value resistor. So it's 0.89 milliamps. 
and you can see by drawing these two load lines we've got um, a different gradient with respect to the operation of the gain stage. Okay, so now what I've done is I've drawn in a couple of markers on the graph here, right? So what we wanted to have a look at here is what happens to the available voltage or the plate voltage. Let's call this the voltage swing, right? Um, the voltage swing that occurs when there is a one volt change in the grid, all right? So I've picked two points on the graph here. We're going to go from minus one on the grid to minus two volts on the grid. Okay, and my blue arrow here is showing the intersection between these two points. And I've just literally got my ruler and I drew these to, you know, to the bottom of the graph and then figured out the numbers, right? It's 160 here and this is 220. So I've got a 60 volt change here or if you know 50, 50 sorry 60 volt voltage swing when I've got a 100k plate resistor if we progress on and do the same thing with our load line for our 330k resistor right here's my minus one volt grid line here's my minus two volt grid line here are the intersection points right use a ruler draw it down I figured out the numbers. This is 184 volts. This is 107. All right, minus one off the other. It's a 75 volt change, or you know, voltage swing. So just summing this all up, right? What we're seeing here is that a one volt change on the grid. So you know, imagine your guitar signal is oscillating and creating a one volt difference on the grid of the triode the 100k plate resistor will generate for you a 60 volt amplification voltage change right whereas a 330k will generate for you a 75 volt voltage change right so you know you can use this to set up how much gain you're generating from the triode all right, well, I hope that was helpful, guys. Look, in conclusion, I think the 330K plate resistor, definitely more compressed, makes the amp a little bit more forgiving to play. It did definitely a, a feel element to this, as well as um, tonally. It's probably more subtle tonally, but the feel of the amp is definitely different when you play it. So you know, I hope the information is useful with respect to understanding a bit more about what's going on um, inside you know, the workings of a 12AX7 and a triode, um, as well as some information that you, you can use to tune or tweak uh, an amp that you might be working on now or in the future. We'll do another one of these. Um, next time I'll look at cathode resistor, different values, the impact on how that, you know, changes the bias of the gain stage, and also a bit about uh, cathode bypass caps. Uh, how to use them and, and, and what they do. So tune in to the channel for that. Um, we'll do that in the coming weeks. Cheers, guys.